EGS, your GPS. Sharon Hornell from here, day 970 of What You Up To Now. Documenting the journey from transition as I transition from the brick and mortar world, the corporate world, the real world of business to the online world of business. Irritates my online friends that I call it the real world versus the internet world. But that's been my experience. That's how I feel about it. And that's, you know, changing slowly because there is, of course, real business conducted on the internet. It just feels less real, less, less tangible than the brick and mortar corporate experience, the, the going out, going to work every day job type experiences. So your GPS is actually your EGS. I was talking about this today on the Set Up for Success segment for preparation for the next Get Up and Go Challenge. Doing a 30 day, of course, Get Up and Go free challenge on the Get Up and Go Challenge page starting October 1st through the 31st. This will be the fourth time I've done a 30 plus day Get Up and Go Challenge since COVID started. It's just kind of my way of sharing, you know, tips and tricks and strategies and lessons that have worked to help me in, in a lot of different areas of my life, especially in the area of dealing with change and challenges. Um, we've all had challenges, literally hundreds of thousands of challenges throughout our life. And I don't think we appreciate how awesome we are at dealing with challenges. So I wanna uh, share a framework and show a way that we can install in our subconscious a strategy and a framework that will make sure and guarantee that we're always better off after any change or challenge that we face than before we went into that. Uh, it's a big promise, but it's absolutely positively true. We can guarantee results for you and for me and for each and every one of us. Every time I've gone through and done the 30 day challenge, I've made a step change advancement in what it is that I want to achieve, the direction I'm going and where I want to go in not just one area of my life, but in actually all seven areas of my life. Uh, and that's that's a, an even bigger promise and I can't promise that for everybody, but I can promise that you will have at least one area of your life that you can positively impact in a 30 day period. So if you do it over and over again, guess what? All of a sudden your life is dramatically better than in all areas and aspects of your life than had you not paid any attention to it at all. So today's topic for uh, set up for success was your emotional guidance system. And I, I'm beating myself up a little because I think I could have done such a better job presenting the topic than I did. But guess what? I think that about absolutely every single video that I've ever done. And I think it's funny because the first initial thought after every video as I, sh I hit share, because I never watch my videos. If I ever watched my videos, I would never have shared an, a video or a podcast episode in the first place. I would have criticized it, I would have shut myself down, and I would never have shared anything. And I'm over the 3,500 mark, uh, I think as of yesterday. Yesterday, I think it was 3,503 or something episodes on my Pajama Grandma podcast. I still haven't changed the name on that. Looking for input on a better name than Pajama Grandma podcast. Haven't decided on it yet, but I'm gonna have to go through the whole uh, process and procedure of changing that. So part of why I haven't done it yet is I don't know how to do it and I haven't wanted to figure it out yet. And I've got 3,500 episodes on there, so how do I do that without losing that information that those videos, the, those shares from the past, how do I transfer that into a new thing? I have to figure that out. But again, after 3,500 videos, and I've done a lot more than that, that's just the ones I've been counting as part of the ones I started sharing them on my podcast. Uh, every single one, I still beep myself and say, oh, that was terrible. I should have said this. I should have said that. How often do we do that? It just is what it is. It's what got out there, got out there, and I'll do better next time. Next time I talk about the emotional guidance system, I'll do a better job of it. I do think I'm going to add it into the 30-day challenge. Part of what I'm testing with the setup for success are what are the key messages that I want to make sure I incorporate into the 30-day challenge because it's one of the most powerful things I've ever learned is that I have the ability to choose my emotions and I can go up or down the scale depending on which direction I want to take my life. And that's really powerful to know that I don't have to jump from anger to love. I can jump from anger to disappointment to worry. And those are all actually lighter, better feeling emotions. And I can work my way up to boredom and then make the jump over to the positive emotions. I don't have to um, make these massive leaps because it's really, really hard for us to go from one frequency and one vibration and one way we're feeling to 
to the opposite way immediately. Now, I, I am working on that. I do practice that. Um, just making massive switches, you know, what from going from what we don't want to what we do want. Thinking about what we can't do to what we can do. Those are opposites. And we, we want to do that, but it's a lot harder than making the scaled progression to lighter, better feeling things to move us toward what we want. And since we're ruled by our emotions, it's really an important tool to have and to know that we have the power to reach for a slightly better feeling thought. It doesn't have to be a leap across the chasm to the opposite feeling. It can be just slight increments to get us moving and spiraling upward versus downward toward what we want. So that was our topic today for Set Up for Success. Only, geez, only a few more days of that. Today was day, uh, today's about the 23rd. So I don't usually talk about the dates in my, in my videos, but today's the 23rd, I believe. So seven more days and wham, we're right into the next Get Up and Go Challenge. Fun challenge today, the 365 day do one fun thing every day challenge was day 200 and I'm gonna look because I have no idea, 261. So 261 days and we're doing a three day thing about what do you wanna be when you grow up? What did you wanna be when you were your youngest? We did yesterday, today I shared what I wanted to be when I was a teenager and tomorrow it'll be what do you wanna be right now? And are you working toward that? Uh, ooh, sneak peek, there you go. That's what tomorrow's topic for fun challenge is about. And today I shared that when I was a teenager, I wanted, actually I wanted to be an artist, but I shared that I wanted to be a journalist because I couldn't decide. I wanted to be an artist or a journalist or a doctor. And you know, then I went to college and changed my major 12 times because uh, I couldn't decide what I wanted to be when I grow up. But I did share that I wanted to be a journalist because I did want to be a journalist. And now I look back and I'm like, thank goodness I didn't follow that career path and stay in the journalism route. I do kind of wish I would have done the art thing. I would have gone the art route because I'm not a drawer or artistic that way, but I like multimedia and I think that that would have been a fun thing to explore. But of course, back when I was in high school going to college, I did not really think for myself. I kind of let the world around me decide what I should do, not what I personally wanted to do and desire because I didn't know I had the freedom to decide that. I mean, people tell you that, but you don't really know or believe it. And so you think, I'm going to pick the career and the outcome that will give me the best chance of having a successful life. So I went to engineering school, went to business school, and uh, thought that would be the, the best route for me. And so, you know, here I still talk about business every day because it has been my life. It has been my life for six, 50 out of my 60 years, I guess. Uh, so that was fun challenge. Uh, Supersize Your Business was about, the idiom I shared today was famous last words, which was really interesting as well because it got me thinking about what am I doing now? What are my short-term goals and objectives? What are my long-term objectives? What do I want my legacy to be? What do I want to be remembered for? And am I right now doing the things that I want to be doing to make sure that I am leaving the legacy that I want to leave, to creating the things and the change in the world that I want to create? Some ways, yes. Some ways, absolutely, freaking positively not. So it means I need to just change direction in a couple of areas and aspects of my life. The famous last words actually is a way of, of sarcastically um, letting somebody know that what they're saying is foolish. And when I Googled it, of course, I got down a rabbit hole because we tend to do that when we go online. We go down rabbit holes and get sidetracked about what literally were people's last words. And that got me to thinking, well, what do I want my real last words to be? And I would like them to be, be loving, love, being, be you. Because to me, that is the most important message that I can leave with anyone ever is that, you know, Treat people the way you want to be treated. Be who you really are um, and let everybody else be who they are as well. And it's, I think that, boy, there's a lot of examples of how that's not being lived out in our in our world right now. And it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. And it's all for a grab for power and greed and authority and to hoard and lord over other people, which is complete and utter nonsense. So that's it. That's what I'm working on today. I promised myself this morning when I woke up that I would actually work on my book today. I have uh, gone a couple of days without working on it. Got sidetracked. Went to a, my storage unit yesterday, which I think was probably a mistake because it's reminding me that I haven't really touched that stuff in a year. So probably, maybe again, I'm going to do another 90-10 split on myself, and 90% of it is going to go to charity. And 10% is going to be the things that I keep that I want to record. You know, the photographs, the family photos, the, the, the family things that mean something to me. And all of the rest, it's just stuff. And so I think I'm going to do another massive downsizing. It's really interesting for me. As I get older, 
I want things to be simpler, less chaotic, not that you can tell by my background, but less chaotic and simpler and more in alignment with how I want to think and feel. And so it's uh, last year I, I moved my home after, you know, 20, 25 years or so and downsized, literally set myself a goal of getting rid of 90% of the material things in my possession. Well, I did that, went down to a storage unit and um, kept some things with me, but I still needed a storage unit for 10% of my stuff. And as I was looking at it yesterday, one of my, my sister took me over there. She's like, all right, we need to look at this storage unit because, you know, you got to do stuff on everybody else's timeline. Went over there, looked at it, and I, I looked around and I'm like, most of this stuff I I haven't looked at in a year. Do I really need it? Well, no, I don't need any of it. But, you know, I've got some things of the kids is in there. I've got some things of... Uh, you know, memory type things. You, you never throw away photographs. I don't think you ever throw away photographs or certain things from, you know, the kids' Christmas ornaments that they made over the years. Things like that that we keep and cherish forever, you know, until we leave and have our famous last words. But for the most part, I think that my 90-10 simplification as I get older has, has been working out pretty well. kind of wish I would have been one of those people that was a minimalist throughout my life, but then I don't either because everything that I've ever kept has had some kind of a sentimental value to me or I wouldn't have kept it. Or I think it's really, really cute or something like unicorns and ducks and my daughter won me a little fox out for dinner the other day in a machine. I wanted more ducks for my ducks in a row, but I got a fox and a unicorn, which is really fun. I snuck a unicorn in. I like to see if anybody ever notices changes and things like that. All right. That's it. That's all I've got today. I've got, uh, been getting a slightly later start these days, which is cool, but it's out of my normal routine and I, I'm pushing back and getting back to my normal way of operating because it makes me feel better. Once we come up with habits and things that work for us, we want to use those and make those automatic and habits help us do that. So getting back to some of my normal routines. That's it. Go out. Have an awesome day. If I can help you anyway, hit me up. Ask in the questions below or the comments below or direct message me. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another update on what I'm doing as I transition from the corporate and brick and mortar world to the online world. Take care. Bye. Be loving. Love being. Be you. Bye.